Well, Sally, thank you so much for being here with me yet again on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I am so thrilled to see you back with so much great news. And for those of you listening, if you have no idea what I'm talking to, Sally is here today and she's going to share something really amazing with us. But she's also been on the podcast before on episode 152. And from memory, Sally, we actually spoke about how to use speaking in order to enhance your visibility. And that was quite an interesting topic by itself. Yeah, I mean, I am, obviously, this is my passion. This is what I'm super jazzed about. And when I talk to entrepreneurs, I kind of, and and we talked about this, but it's like, P.S., you're a speaker. They're like, oh, am I? I'm like, yes, you are, because people need you. People need you to get out there and share your voice. And so here we are in part two, and just going to kind of dig under another layer beneath that and I'm super excited to be here thanks for I having me know. back I know absolutely so for those of you who would like to actually listen to that episode by all means go back to episode 152 and you can obviously see Sally there yet again but today Sally we're going to dive into another interesting topic and we'll get to that in a minute but just to kind of recap tell us a little bit about what it is that you're doing who you are yeah. and part two of that stage that brought you to where you are now Yeah. Well, hello. Hello. Uh, People often call me Sally Z. uh, And and sometimes what has been happening recently, Henriette, is they're like, Sally, you're a professional nudger. That is really what you do. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take that in as a compliment. (laughs) That, that, That's what I do is I nudge people from the sidelines into the spotlight at work, on stages, in your career, um, and in life as a whole, because my work as a speaker and a speaker coach is really all about sharing your voice and confidently, courageously, and clearly connecting with the people who you get to serve. And as uh, entrepreneurs and business owners, they need that connection from us. So Um, For the last 25 plus years, I have been speaking and coaching entrepreneurs and change makers of all stripes to help them really leverage their voice for more leads, more revenue, more authority, more impact. Um, And I just wrote a book, so um, which is huge news. It's been a really big year and it's all about the art of storytelling and the power and persuasion that happens when we share stories that really move our audiences. So you might not think of yourself as a speaker. You might think of yourself as an entrepreneur, but I'm here to tell you, not only are you a speaker, but you're also a storyteller. Yes. We need these tools. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, even for me, myself, throughout the many years I've been in business, I always come back to storytelling and this is why I'm so yeah. I'm so excited to have you on the episode so we can kind of like like I said take on part 2 and talk about this and that's what yeah. we're going to concentrate on today you know using the art of storytelling and persuasion in your business in order yeah. to get the outcome at the end of the day whatever yeah. that might look like right yeah well and and you know we especially as entrepreneurs we're marketers that is you know I I didn't think about that when I was like, I want to start a business. I want to be an entrepreneur. It was like, oh, you are a marketing professional. You are a salesperson all the time. You're selling your ideas and stories we know, and this is not news to anybody to know that stories are important. We know this, but actually doing it and doing it in a way that connects with and moves your audience. That's the part that I think we all need to be pushed on a little bit more to really show up and connect with our audience. So that's what this book is truly about is um, speaking your story. It's different than writing it. It's different. It's a whole different level of vulnerability and inner challenge that bubbles up within us when we're about to do this. Um, But I think that's why it's so especially magical. Yeah, no, absolutely. And let's start talking about this a little bit, because when we start talking about storytelling, persuasion, Mm -hmm. all of those kind of things, Mm -hmm. people are like, yeah, of course. (laughs) But there's so much underneath all of that. It's not just like you're just picking out a golden ticket and go, okay, let's do this. 
doesn't just happen right. like that. I think one of the things you mentioned, it starts very much with a lot of confidence as well. Mm. Moving mm -hmm. or shifting from self-doubt to self-confidence. And yes. can you kind of just break that up for us a little bit more and just tell us a little bit more what you meant by that? Sure. Yeah. It, it, anybody that I'm working with, wherever they are, how it doesn't matter how skilled they are, how experienced they are, when they are stepping out front to speak their story in a way that they really want to move their audience, which is a different goal than I want to, you know, impress my audience. I want to be the best in the room. Like this is a different goal. If we are really trying to, and I think this is the goal we should be aiming for, which is we want to move our audience, then it's going to call upon something a little bit different from within us. And it's going to bring up resistance. Yeah. That's its job in some ways is to bring up the resistance within you so that you push yourself to a new level of vulnerability and connection with people because those two things are related. The more vulnerable you can be, the deeper connection that you get with your audience. I'm not saying share everything and share all, but there's a related correlation there. Uh, and so when I'm working with my speakers, I'm often talking about things that have nothing to do with speaking has nothing to do with the skill of it. It really has to do with overcoming the resistance, the internal, what often referred to as delays that come up for ourselves. It's like, I want to do this, but can I, I want to have this bigger impact. I want to speak my story. I want to get on that big stage. I want it to be an audience moving moment, but does anybody care about my story? Does anybody have like, who cares, little old me, I'm just over here living my little life and doing my business and who really cares? And it brings up all that resistance. And so confidence is this elusive thing that's hard. It's a fleeting feeling. Instead, what I think is powerful to think about is how do we, how do we overcome the resistances, the barriers that hold us back and build towards more self-trust. Yeah. That's what I want you to have is a level of self-trust. It, it looks like confidence, I think, to other people. And you might call it confidence. But really, if you, if you pull it apart a little bit, what it is, is a, a real deep level of trusting yourself to handle whatever is going to happen. Because it's live theater. <laughs> like, you don't get to I control know. what's going to happen. <sighs> Oh, which is awesome I, and terrifying. But. It is terrifying. And I can only smile as boldly as I am here because I know exactly what you're referring to. Um, and and that, do you also find that, you know, that confidence that you have, like some days it's there and some days it's not there. It, it yeah. constantly, it's like ebb and flows. Some days you go like, yeah, I can do this. And other days you're like, oh my gosh, why did I say yes yeah. to this? Yeah, and I think it's really important to normalize that, that that is just a part of this work. It's just a part of entrepreneurship. Yeah. It is just absolutely a part of our, any time we're out sharing our message and sharing ourselves, some days we feel like it and some days we don't. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just have to tell everyone all the time, I get scared too. I get nervous too. There is no way that... Um, I can do this work and try and be growing and reaching new people and pushing myself and not feel a level of internal resistance, imposter syndrome, fear, insecurity, all of the, all of the things that come up. It's just yeah. a part of it. So if, if you ever have the thought audience as you're listening to this, well, I don't belong on stage or there's no way I could do that because I feel scared because I feel um, some level of imposter syndrome, or I'm worried about the judgment of other people that all of those things are very normal. It is just a part of it. And so, like you said, whether your confidence level is high or low, what we're practicing is what I call show up anyway, hashtag show up anyway. That's our job is to just simply get out there and show up anyway. Yeah. And I love that because I think a part of that, when you show up anyway, and you go through the process, you walk away, and actually, your confidence has grown a little bit, regardless of what happened. 
So you just feel so much better and you feel like, I could do this possibly again. And then you do it again. Your yeah. confidence grows again based on that. Yes. Yeah. When, when people say, what's the real secret to being a great speaker? I'm like, just doing it yeah. is the secret. You learn by doing. There's no way to theoretically learn about speaking you can only learn by doing and so the more you do it the easier it gets and the the more self-trust that you build to be able to handle whatever might happen whatever might come your way as you're yeah. speaking your story more and more yeah and I love the fact that you're saying that you've got to trust yourself more it's almost like the anecdote <laughs> but again you know how do you learn to trust yourself more? Is that just by showing up, just by doing? Or what, what, what mm -hmm. is that one golden nugget that you would say in order to build that self-trust? Yeah. Uh, well, one of the, because speaking is such a mental game, yeah. it really is. I think it's 80% mental. And so what that means is we really have to manage our own minds around speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, so ultimately our job is to show up anyway and to do it, to learn by doing, to put yourself out there, allow your, allow it to not be perfect, allow the, you know, blips and bloopers to happen that will happen and know that in the doing, you can look back and recognize that you have done that you yeah. have done. You did that and you can do it again. I've done it before and I can do it again. And that if we can look back, that's the trick I think is to look at back at progress and not look always judging ourselves forward. Are you familiar with the, the gap in the gain concept? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That has been so, so powerful for me in my own entrepreneurial journey is to, uh, to really watch the, that feeling of I'm not there yet or just be constantly assessing myself against where I haven't yet achieved and to say, oh, well, but what happens if I just stop and turn around and look at how far I've come? Yeah. And I think that's a really essential tool and practice to build self-trust and recognize growth because it's happening every time you do it even if you haven't paused and reflected on what am i learning what am i your body is learning yeah like it those lessons are in your body and so they're they're coming with you each time the next time you do it um and and so managing your mind so that you show up anyway will allow you to keep making progress and look back and be like, okay, I, I am doing this. Turns out I am a speaker <laughs> because I'm speaking. <laughs> yeah. And, and that comes with persistence again. So you're not yeah. just going to do it once and go, I've nailed it. <laughs> you're going to have to keep right. on doing it. It's an ever evolving, ever changing thing. And there's always room yes. for growth. Well, and what's funny is there is no, there is no destination on this. And I, and, it's sometimes a disappointing reality that I communicate to my speakers. I'm like, this is speaking is a game of iteration. It is purely like, because you're like, well, i have almost got it. And once I get there, it'll be done. And, you know, I'll have, you know, all of the pieces in place and then I'm going to really soar. It's like, no, once you've got all the pieces in place, you're going to want to evolve them and change them again, because your story changes a little bit. You change, the world has changed, your industry changes, their needs change, your audience is asking for something else. So, you know, if, if we can eliminate the idea of getting to a certain destination, it's like, no, we're just going to get a little bit better every time. We're just going to get a little bit better. And, you know, it's a, it's a, the pathway to it and really it only works if you look back and mm. recognize growth because yeah. otherwise it could be really defeating yes to sit in iteration right so these those two ideas are really important together yeah no i love it i love that you put that concept together but let's talk about the storytelling this is where yeah. we look at the true power of persuasion especially within storytelling and let's yeah. dive into that a little bit because obviously that's what your book is all about and how yeah, do people, or why should people utilize it? 
Well, stories, I think, are the most important persuasive tool that we as entrepreneurs and leaders have. And they are accessible to everyone. Learning the art and craft of storytelling, it's not rocket science. There's a few little nuggets that can make a huge difference for you in your persuasive storytelling. And let's just be real. We are all persuading. When we are communicating, we are trying to do something with that communication. And, and most people are underutilizing stories in that mm -hmm. approach. And here's some of the like beautiful reasons why stories are so, so persuasive. They are, and you probably know this, but they are so brain friendly, right? If we tell stories in the right way, they ignite all kinds of incredible brain activity that helps just fast track this connection that we want with our audience, where they start to feel this experience as if they were there. Um, there's a part of the brain called the insula, and it's looking for relatable experiences. So from an audience perspective, they're hearing your story, but they're also going, oh yeah, I've had a moment kind of like that, or I, I, like, I recognize that experience. And so what I think is one of the things that is so, so cool about storytelling is it can take two different people and however you want to define that, and it builds bridges between people who maybe have different lives and have different things going on. So how do we really build that connection there? So the brain science is really clear about the power of persuasion. And you've probably felt this, right? When you're giving a talk, there's a lot of talking, a lot of really powerful one-liners, but the story engages. The story is the yeah. thing that pulls people in for all of the reasons that I just said with um, the brain science. Um, and depending on where you put your stories, because telling an entertaining story is great and that's one thing, but what makes it persuasive is where it exists in your content. Mm. So really importantly, your story needs to come before you tell us why you're telling the story. Yeah. I call it this just a story first methodology. We really want to make sure that before people know why you're telling the story or what the story is about, they are by, you know, because of the magic happening in the brain, they're leaning in, they're curious. They are feeling the point of your story before you have a chance to say, I'm going to tell you a story about this, right? And, and a, the mistake a lot of people make is their stories are used as proof to their points. And we want to flip that uh, equation and make sure that our stories are used as the tool to pull people in. And then we follow up by shaping perspective afterwards. Yes. Okay, that was just like a high level. I Here's some really love important this. things about no, stories. No, honestly, as you were talking there, I'm shaking my head vigorously because I agree with <laughs> it. And, and that's kind of what I'm doing, not just you know, uh, from a speaking perspective, but also in everyday content creation. It's about that storytelling, yes. opening up with a story, create that curiosity, using it as a hook. But then also you can equally use that story as an analogy in order to explain what it is that you want to share with the audience. Yes. And if yes. you can yes. kind yes. of get that, whether through speaking, whether for, through content creation in the written word, um, it -hmm. makes such a huge difference. And the reason why I love this so much is talking from my own perspective. Whenever I put a piece of content out there and I share a story and I use that story as an analogy to describe something or to make people remember something, here's the thing. People never remember what it is that I told them. They always remember the story. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because the brain, the brain science, it was like the brain was built for stories and built yeah. for empathy. And it just dials up. Um, it, the empathy piece takes your story and makes it meaningful for them. And so, you know, a lot of people are like, well, people don't want to hear about my story. I'm like, you're not telling your story for you. You're not telling it to say, I want everybody to understand me better. You're telling it to help them understand themselves better. Yeah. 
And so, it, and it depends on how you do that. The way that you format your storytelling really, really matters. Um, and I, I can share with you the formula if you would like. Would that be helpful? Oh, if you want to give it to us, that would be amazing. Please do. Please do. I would love, I would love to give it to you. Uh, I call it the simple story framework and it is, it's in my book and I dive in pretty deeply into the approach with this, but it's based on three M's. MMM is the acronym. And the first M is moments. That's your story. And I like to think of stories as moments because one of the things that ignites the brain science of persuasive storytelling is making sure that that story exists in one particular moment in time. If we are telling people generally about a thing, that's not a story, right? It is a, that's some great information about you. A story exists in one moment in time. So that's your first M. The second M is meaning. So after you've told us this wonderful story that exists in one moment, your job then is to take that particular moment and make it meaningful for your audience. So it turns out storytelling for persuasion isn't just about the storytelling. It's also about what happens afterwards. And this is where we really uh, lean into our job as speakers, which is not just to entertain, but it's to shape perspective. So that meaning piece right there is where you say, uh, you answer the question for the audience that they are asking, which is, so what? What does this have to do with me? Who cares? <laughs> They're just like, great, thank you. That was interesting, but please make that connection for them. Not because they're dumb and can't do it themselves, but it's because your job as a leader, as an entrepreneur, is to shape perspective and understanding, to vision cast for people and help them behave and do things differently. That's whatever you're, whatever you're selling as an entrepreneur, actually what you're selling is a new way of being and doing. So that meaning piece is so essential. And then the last M is move. So it's moment, meaning, and move. And all I mean by move is you're letting them, inviting them into the next step. So that might be a very direct call to action, depending on your context. It might be a question, a self-reflection question. It might be, um, what did you think? Leave a comment, right? So yeah. you are, uh, we just want to wrap that loop up because the people who walk with you through all of those M's, they're, they want to know, what do I do from here? What is next from here? So we're just going to close that loop all the way through moment, meaning, and move. Yes. And I love that concept. I love the three M's because it's like anything. If you, if you leave people hanging and they're still so curious and they can't find something to conclude or to kind of answer yeah. that question that you've now created in their mind, they're going to be distracted yeah. and they're going to find that, what did I get from this? This was a waste of time. Yeah. So by concluding yeah. that and finishing and closing that loop, I think it is so important because you don't want to leave them hanging. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. If you leave them hanging, right. they're going to feel like this didn't do anything for me. What is the point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's important to not overthink the move piece because yeah. ultimately we're just putting a little bookend on it and it can be very, very simple. Um, it does not have to be a sales pitch or a really hard direct yeah. call to action. Um, reach out, let's chat. Like it does not have to be that, but we do want to invite them into some kind of action for themselves yeah. to close that loop and wrap that up. Yeah, 100%, 100%. But let's talk a little bit then about authenticity because I think one of the things yeah. for speakers standing up, having to share our story, we struggle yeah. very much with the authenticity part, not because we don't know who we are, I'd like to think you know who you are, yeah. but also I think sometimes yeah. there's a disconnect as to how to approach that topic in particular. Yeah. Well, I think speaking in some ways, it, it's, it's ironic because when I ask people, what is the thing that you most appreciate about speakers? When is the last time you were moved by a speaker? And they will say two things bubble up. 
the stories, right? They had an unbelievable story or I like really connected with the stories and it was authentic. Those are the pieces that people say again and again and again, right? It moved them in some way. Their authenticity is what moved them. Uh, and, and so we recognize that it is appreciated. We appreciate it from an audience perspective. But then when we ourselves are facing that moment, there's a lot of um, shoulds that come up in our minds, especially around speaking. Okay, that you've got to act like this, or you've got to have this kind of look and feel, or you, you, I, in order for me to really show up and move an audience and really have that big moment, I've got to have a book, ten thousand followers on Instagram. I don't know, fill in the blank. I've got to be wearing a blazer and high heels, and you know, it's like. There's so much room for you and it's essential actually. It's not just that there's room, it's actually so essential that you discard the supposed tos and the shoulds yeah. and kind of take off these layers of what a speaker is so that you can show up and really dial in that connection. Because ultimately, that's what people want. It, 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 and I can say it till the cows come home, but until somebody really experiences that, takes that level of bravery, brave action, and says, "Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be honest about where I'm at and who I am, and uh, say the brave, truthy thing." that I think needs to be said to this audience in this moment and share that part of who I am. Like if you experience that level of brave, your audience will so appreciate it and recognize it. They do, they appreciate brave. Uh, and so those two pieces cannot be disconnected. Your authentic story, your way of being, how you move, the body that you have as you step out front, your voice. People, I can't tell you how many times speakers are like, that's my voice. That's what I sound like. Like the rest of us are already used to your voice, Henriette. Like we, we've been <laughs> listening to it for a long time. We love your voice. You don't yet, but the rest of us do. So it's, it's this really admirable, courageous journey yeah. of discarding the layers that hold us back. And it's part of the reason I just love speaking myself because it's a challenge to do that again and again. And it's why I love working with speakers and people who want to be speakers who think that they can't. I'm just like, you're already doing it. It's already in you. There's nothing you have to become in order to belong on stage. Yes. As you are. That's all you need. Yes. And I love it. And I resonate with what you say so much, you know, because I think from the authenticity point of view, people can feel it when you're authentic yeah. and people can feel when you're uncomfortable. If yeah. you're uncomfortable with that authentic side of yourself, they will feel it as well. And that will put right. them or that will make them uncomfortable. So yeah. if you're at ease, by, you know, your sharing, storytelling, whatever that vulnerability is, if you're comfortable yeah. with that and know that that authenticity they can feel, yeah. Yeah, the thing is, is they're not gonna, they're not gonna go like, oh my gosh, stay away, you know, we don't like your yeah. authenticity. Actually, they appreciate it so much more and it attracts them so much yes. more to you. Oh, it's so true. And it's a really interesting tension, right? Because a lot of people will interpret authenticity as, oh, I just need to like wing it and just like, you know, see what happens. Uh, there might be contexts in which that's totally fine and great. Like you hop on a podcast, right? That's a moment, like I kind of know what we're going to talk about, but also we're going to wing it a little bit and I've got to trust myself in that moment. Yeah. But honestly, for the most part, we earn, <laughs> and I use that word with some hesitation, we earn that level of authenticity by continuously showing up and taking risks, yeah. right? And, and you, start to, you start to believe that who you are 
is enough. And it doesn't happen easily and it doesn't happen quickly for the most part. So we're back to showing up anyway. Yes. We're back to just trying publicly and seeing what happens and feeling for yourself. Cause there can be lots of moments where, where, I mean, I can think of so many moments where at the last minute, I didn't really like the, the, the polish went up, the desire for perfection, yeah. the, you know, stick into my script in ways that was not where I couldn't really be present with the audience. Like that happens because in that moment I couldn't let go. I just, I couldn't really trust myself in that moment. Yeah. I was worried about too many other things that happens. Um, but having the feeling, having the experience of also just trusting myself, trusting my preparation, trusting that I've, um, that I know my stuff so well that I can let go and be really present with people that feels so much better. Yeah. And it's just, a, a it's, it's, it's more fun for me and absolutely changes the experience and the connection that I have with my people. So it's, it, it is a weird, difficult thing, authenticity. And I think we'll always be wrestling with it. It's a, and it's a worthy thing to wrestle with. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And you know, every time you say that it just kind of goes back again and again and again to showing up, show up anyway. Yeah. Just yeah. do it. Just do it. Learn yeah. from it. You're not going to know unless you try. <laughs> It's so true. I wish it was easier. People, you know, are, I was like, I'm still doing all the things I'm teaching my speakers to do, which yeah. is yeah, show up anyway, even when I'm, the confidence level is low today, but we're showing up anyway, whatever yeah. it might be. But also, I think it's important to understand that no matter how experienced you are, still as a human being, you're still going through all of these things. You're still questioning yourself sometimes. You still have to work yeah. up a little bit more confidence. And yeah. you're still wondering, is the story okay? You know, yeah. showing up authentically. It's, it's always going to be there. It's never yeah. going to go away, but it becomes easier. Right. Yeah. I like to talk about how, um, you know, the, the shift from I'm, I'm scared or I'm nervous to I'm excited, right? That is a, that is simply a different story. I'm telling myself about the same physiological reaction I'm having, right? If my heart is pounding backstage and I'm about to go and I know that, I'm, I'm, I want to bring my authentic voice in the moment. I'm like, Ooh, I'm ready to speak my story. I think, Oh gosh, I'm scared. Right. We have these internal reactions. The story I'm telling myself could be I'm scared or my heart's beating. I'm like, I'm so excited. Okay. This is going to be amazing. Here we go. Right. Same experience happening phys yeah. physically a different story that I'm telling myself about what's happening. And the truth is at first it making that switch feels artificial. You're like, I'm excited, but I'm really not, but I'm trying to tell myself this. Right. And it's okay for that. At first it takes a little bit of believing that harder <laughs> and doing it. Um, but now I can recognize, because I've been doing this for 25 years, if I have that internal feeling of like, gosh, a moment of a flash of self-doubt, I recognize it and I can flip that internal story pretty quickly now. But that's because I've been doing it for a long time. So the practice of recognizing whatever internal story you're telling yourself and finding a different, more powerful story that will give you the momentum to take action to show up anyway because yeah. that's all we need to do is just do and learn by doing um so what's happening internally for yourself in that yeah it's so powerful i love how you're putting it all together but i think in a nutshell there's also you know from your experience working with your clients there's also a couple of things that people need to overcome 
when it starts mm. to tell their stories. And I wanted yeah. you to bring it up because I think you mentioned it last time as well in episode 152, but I want you to share it again because I think it is so powerful and it kind of makes mm. us think a little bit about it, but to go like, actually, yeah. it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I, I refer to them as the four horsemen of the avoidance. And that language maybe has changed since last, last we talked about it. Um, because as I've been out talking with more entrepreneurs about this, we've refined it to some degree. And I've gotten so much uh, really resonance from people about this. And, you know, after working with so many people over the last 20 years, you go, it really is. It's these internal stories that we are telling ourselves that keep us from showing up and really speaking our stories. Um, so, and we've talked about a handful of them here, so I'll do a really quick flyover. But I like to think of these four horsemen as the, you know, they're kind of haunting us and they're following us around and, and, and we gotta, we've got to do our best to ignore them and not let them rule the day. So... Um, the four horsemen are fear, imposter syndrome. Uh, you know, we just talked about fear, right? That heart pounding yeah. and, and switching that the best you can to excitement. Imposter syndrome being that belief that you don't have, it's not already within you. You don't have what you need in order to show up and have an impact in that moment. And it's not that there aren't improvements to be made and things to that you can become, but you have within you what you need um, and the belief around that. So imposter syndrome. Uh, the third is perfection. Yes. Oof, Big right? one. Oh, huge. Right? I'm not ready yet. Um, I don't know how many of you get stuck if you have a speaking gig or you're doing a workshop or you're even you've got a live and it's like, okay, I, how do I make sure I've got everything just right before I press go? Uh, and what if we could just shift that internal story a little bit? So it's not about being perfect. It's about being ready enough, being 80%. You get to 80% and it's good enough to move on. It's get mo, right? Just get it out there. Um, and then the last horseman being... Um, judgment, the yes. fear of judgment from other people. And that has been the biggest one for me that I am always working on is just letting go. I'm not for everybody. I don't have to be for everybody. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I, I, and it's okay for people to meet me and say, you are not for me. That's a good thing. It means that my point of view is strong enough. Yes. It means that I'm actually saying something not just flying over hoping to make sure everybody is uh is uh okay and likes me likes it like no we are we are going for something truer and braver than that um but we've got to let go let go of judgment it's so beautiful. all four of these come up again and again I know, but I think it kind of like concludes everything that's what we've shared throughout um, the episode so far and just yeah. brings it back to those four horsemen. So thanks, four yeah. horsemen. You kind of concluded everything nicely for us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, four horsemen, for, for being like a, a walk through our middle school brains and hearts. <laughs> like we are, we are amazing adult like badass entrepreneurs. Can I swear it as a you can. Know, it's okay. fine. Okay, fantastic. And yet when we are doing big things, we can't help but those four horsemen are gonna rear their ugly heads. Yeah. And so the trick is just managing them, acknowledging thank you. I know you're trying to like warn me about something, but I actually don't I don't need I don't need it. Yeah. I don't need it. Yeah. I've got a story I need to go speak. <laughs> And then just show up and do it. <laughs> and just show up and do it. We make it sound so easy, don't we? <laughs> I know, but you know what? I think it's it's one of those tiny little things, especially for speakers. We know these things, but sometimes we just need to hear it again 
just to kind of yeah. emphasize those things. It's like, yeah, yeah, I resonate with that. Of course, of course, yes. I'm going to go do this. Yes. And it just gives you that courage again, that motivation yeah. just to do yeah. it, to go out there. And, yes. and remember, audience, when, <laughs> when we talk about public speaking, we're not just talking about standing in front of a crowd, okay? No. Public speaking is very much involved. If you do a Facebook Live, um, that can be considered as public speaking. If you do a workshop, yeah. even online, that is considered public speaking. Oh, for sure. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. just mean standing in front of an audience and all of these things no. you will uncover and you might have actually already experienced. Yeah, it's part of the reason why, to, to go back to when we first, you and I first met, we were talking about speaking, like you are a speaker. As an entrepreneur, yeah. you are a speaker. And here's why, because that's actually a skill that we are using and need to use every day in order to connect with and serve our audience. I don't care if you're coaching, you're, uh, you're building an online presence, you're selling a product, you're whatever your particular avenue of entrepreneurship is, you are the messenger. You are the communication mode. So we need to feel connected to you and hear you. So I use the term speaking really generally, really broadly. Yeah. It's your Facebook Live. It's your podcast. It's standing on stage at that conference. It's doing an in-person workshop. It's all the things. All the things. All the things. Wherever you come through yeah. in a speaking opportunity, online, in person, and you speak to one or more people, you're still speaking. Yeah. And you can utilize everything which Sally just shared here with us. But, oh my gosh, I feel like we can talk about this forever because it's one of those topics I that I just love to untangle a little bit. But more importantly, the one thing that I want to ask you is to tell us a little bit yeah. more about the book. I think some of the things we've covered here yeah. anyway, but do you have a copy of your book there? Can you show it to us? And can you tell us a little bit more yeah. about it? Oh, it's a really... I it's it's a can i just say i think it's beautiful it is I gorgeous really, and it shines oh it's got golden dots that shine there you go i got talked into the gold foil henriette but i love it i'm so glad i did i was kind of like it's oh, gorgeous it's kind of a lot but you know uh nothing wrong with a little bling but i i will say the the meaning of this cover matters a lot to me so we have someone on stage here sharing their story they're speaking their story yeah. and it i just love this is what happens when we have the courage to stand up and speak our story is it is a beautiful co-creation between you and every single person that you're talking to it's you and that individual you and that other individual you and that other individual yeah. and it bounces around between you and throughout the room creating connection and uh and helping you get your message into people's minds and hearts in ways where uh, without a story, it, it, it doesn't work as effectively. Yeah. So the book is truly about sharing the formula, digging into the formula I shared with you all, the MMM. But it's also about really becoming someone who tells stories. Uh, we think of, especially sometimes as entrepreneurs, we get called subject matter experts right you have an idea there's a there's um you know you're called upon to teach a particular thing and i think that is great i really do we've got to start with a level of expertise but then how do we shift from expert to somebody who shapes perspective and i would call that person a thought leader for lack of a better term Sometimes in my world, I call them a mover, right? If you're, if you're a mover, you are moving your audience, you're shaping perspective, you're, you're bringing people with you into a new way of thinking and being. And so stories are the tool to do that, but for us to step into that space and do it in a way that really matters, that moves your audience, yeah. there's a level of becoming that happens. And that's why most of this conversation was not about the tactical storytelling strategies and they're in there they're in there i want to make sure that you become a better storyteller but it's also just becoming a storyteller yeah and i love that concept because it all starts here 
first and foremost. Yeah. You can have all the tools in the world and everything can be perfectly lined up for you. But if it's not here first, as you, as a person, as a storyteller being, yeah. all those tools is going to be naught value yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. You can be perfectly skilled and do all the things right. But if we don't sense that you are showing up real, yeah. it doesn't really matter. People are like, thank you. That was nice. <laughs> Which is very different than, ah, I see. I see things differently. Thank you. Yes. It's very different. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very powerful indeed. Oh my gosh, Sally, I can't thank you enough for again coming on the podcast for the second time and sharing yeah. so much. I mean, even from the first episode we did, episode 152, I remember I was just gobsmacked and everybody just Aww. loved all the golden nuggets that came from it. And here you are again sharing so much. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thanks for having me on. I love these conversations with you. We dig deep together and I really yeah. appreciate that. I love that. Um, obviously, I like to kind of really wrestle with these big ideas. So I appreciate that you're game for that. And I hope this has been a good part two to just kind of peel the onion one more layer yeah. and keep digging underneath so that you can all share your voice and get into the spotlight that's that's what i want for you nudge 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 <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> so for those of you listening or watching this video of course you can go and get sally's book the link will be in the show notes so please go and have a look at it especially if you're now in that stage where you're thinking i want to enhance my speaking whether you go out there to be on a stage or whether it's just to get more comfortable with who you are being when you speak to an mm. audience. And I think that is super powerful. And I think through Sally's book, you will definitely gain those steps, but also learn more about yourself in the process, which is why we're all on this journey, right? In order to learn more about ourselves. And then if you want to connect with Sally on social media and via her website, all the details will be in my show notes. I highly suggest you go and connect with her. And if you've got any questions, reach out on social media. You never know. She might just get back to you and say, get the book. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear from your people. Thank you again for having me. I so enjoyed it. You're very welcome. Thank you so much, Sally. We'll be in touch very soon again.